welcome to my channel, Nomad's Land Studios. My name is Rebecca, and the time has come for another ridiculously romantic video. Today, I will be reading for you the backs of these three romance novels. Today's romance novels are all fairy tale romance novels, which means that they are all based on fairy tales. The Gentle Beast by Colleen Shannon. Once upon a time, they lived happily ever after. Give your heart to the gentle beast and forever share love's sweet feast. Raised amid bountiful wealth and enlightened ideas, Callista Raleigh was more than a match for the radicals, rakes, and reprobates who railed against England's King George III. Then, a sudden reversal of fortune brought into her life a veritable brute who craved revenge against her family almost as much as he hungered for her kiss. And even though her passionate foe concealed his face behind a hideous mask, Callista believed he was merely a man with a man's strengths and appetites. But when the love-starved stranger swept her away to his secret lair, Callista realized that wits and reason weren't enough to conquer him. She'd need a desire, both satisfying and true. If beauty were to tame the beast. Ooh. Oh. Look at that. I wonder if we have a little excerpt in this one. Woohoo! The dragon's glare. You know what I want. Again, that gaze ran over her, lingering, possessing. There are some things even the fierce dragon cannot have. How pathetic that a man of your stature should be reduced to such bargaining. If I did not find you so deplorable, I could almost pity you. The hiss of his breath was her only warning before she felt the full force of the dragon's fury. One minute, he was relaxed against the desk. The next, he was hovering over her. Words of righteous wrath spewing from his mouth like flames. Pity me. Revile me. Even hate me. But you will only delay what became inevitable the other night. I have no need of bargaining or even coercion. As you yourself have proved these moments past in my arms. You will come to me soon enough. Not because you have to. Because you want to. The Glass Slipper by Linda O. Johnston By the stroke of midnight, you must kiss the handsome prince who will bring you bliss. By no stretch of the imagination did Paige Connor consider herself a princess. She was far more interested in pursuing her research than in attending gala balls or dressing in frilly gowns. Then, the feisty beauty is bumbling fairy godmother arranged for her to take a job that landed her in a small kingdom. And, in the arms of a prince, with more than dancing on his mind. Enchanted from the first, Paige longed to lose herself in her royal suitor's loving embrace. Yet, she feared that their desire was the result of a seductive spell and not her own considerable charms. And Paige wouldn't agree to live passionately ever after until she had claimed the prince's heart the magic all her own. I wonder if this one has something inside. Woohoo! We get more! His ugly duckling. Wait, this is Cinderella! Nico reached out till his fingertips touched Paige Connor's narrow chin. Gently, he turned her face until she was facing him. Eyes the shade of fine, rare amber. Illuminescent behind her ugly glasses, blinked quizzically. Miss Connor, he said, his words barely audible even to him. Paige. He leaned forward, his fingertips tipped. 
tipping her chin so her mouth was at the right angle. Her lips were soft and warm, and he made the kiss very gentle. That was all he meant to do, if he meant anything at all. But her mouth moved beneath his, and suddenly the kiss deepened. She tasted of the wine of dinner, plus her very own special vintage. And he pressed his mouth hard against her. His arms circled her, pulling her tightly to him. He felt her flail out, as though unsure what to do with her arms. But in a moment, they wrapped around him. Her fingers dug into his hair, drawing him closer till he couldn't tell where his mouth ended and hers began. His hands moved as though of their own accord. He reached out to her as his fingertips grazed the base of her breast. Woo boy! She drew in her breath sharply. <gasps> the sound startled him, awakened him. He drew back. What had he been thinking of? He stood abruptly, looking down at Paige Connor. Her hair was pushed away from her face, emphasizing its heart shape and giving her a morning after mussiness that made him throb despite himself. Her lips were drawn together as though she again tried to taste their kiss. Their eyes caught and she immediately looked down at her lap. Her hair again hid her face. Nico. Nico, she said, her soft voice wavering. I don't think we should. You are absolutely right, Miss Connor. We should not. He turned and stomped away. The Wild Swans by Kate Holmes, not Katie Holmes. What do women want? King Richard had had it with frivolous females filling his ears with their foolishness. Uh, yet, for all his castles and dragon slaying, he still needed a wife. Preferably one who wouldn't plague him with womanly whining. One who knew when to shut up. So, why not lay claim to the sweetly saucy and utterly silent wench he encountered in an enchanted forest? A man who really listens. Princess Ariane had had it with meddling males, making her life miserable. When her twelve brothers angered an ogre, she was the one stuck with spinning nettles into shirts to save them from eternal servitude as swans. And she had to complete the task in total silence. To make matters worse, along came chatty King Richard wanting to bed her, wanting to wed her. Rugged Richard made her virginal knees weak. But could even a king know a woman's mind without her speaking? I doubt it. Premises promises. All I want is a wife, said the chatty, impossibly handsome king. <laughs> She'll have the face of an angel, of course, and golden hair and eyes as blue as the bluest sky. Or maybe brown eyes and black hair. I can be flexible, said his majesty, to show he was reasonable. What I really want is someone who's quiet, damn it. Is that too much to ask? Is that really too much for the king of Avalon to ask? A wife who knows how to keep her mouth shut. Why is it so damnably hard to find a woman like that? I swear, if ever I meet a woman who doesn't talk my ears off, I'll marry her straight away. Even if she's ugly, if she can keep her mouth shut, I'll make her my queen. The king heaved a blaggard sigh. <sighs> On my honor, I swear it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. I post every week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.